Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Paula Degnan, and welcome to our new home. WYLN-TV is now coming to you from our new studio on Route 940 in Ebervale, Hazel Township. Now, if you've ever moved, you know now it's time to find a place for everything you brought with you. And that's what's happening now. Our crew is working to continue to unpack and set up all the equipment. So, if things aren't quite where you expect them to be, remember, we are a work in progress. A local business is stepping up to help out the people of Ukraine. Our Julie Stefanovich has more on how you can also lend a hand by purchasing special baked goods. Carmen's Bakery in Delhi in Hazleton is currently holding a fundraiser in order to help out the Ukrainian refugees. The staff at the bakery were inspired by their baker whose family back in Poland has taken in refugees. And Janina, our baker, said, well, that's just a small thing. And I said, no, it's not. I said, everybody combined doing small acts of good becomes a large act of good. So we thought about how can we contribute to that. And then we're a bakery, so we decided we could make cookies, our wonderful sugar cookies, and sell them. And all of the proceeds that we're getting for these cookies are going to go over to the in Ukraine. The heart-shaped cookies are decorated in blue and gold to represent Ukraine's flag. All of the proceeds at Carmen's will be sent to St. Mary's Ukrainian Catholic Church in McAdoo, where they will then be distributed to help out the humanitarian effort in the war-torn country. I mean, just watching the news every night is just a horrible experience now to see all of those poor people with no place to go, their homes are ruined, children, all those children, that, that's what really got to me. Children and the, and the elderly too that can't even walk, they're putting them in sharp shopping carts and walking them across bridges there. It, it, it's just awful. And uh, this just warms my heart to see all the people from our area coming in and buying these cookies because I know and, and they know too that this is going over to help those people. Millions worldwide have seen the heartbreaking images through the media, but for others, the crisis hits close to home. When we, we talk uh, to Janine and Janine talks to her sister, she said they're very afraid there because they could actually hear the bombs going off. Uh, they're close to the to the edge there, Poland and the Ukraine border. So it's, it's very scary. And she said there are so many people there and there's military everywhere there. Customers can help out by stopping in Carmen's on Wednesday to purchase a special baked goods. We're thrilled to, to be able to do that. Uh, the people of the Hazleton area have such a, a big heart and um, they're all here, you know, trying to help. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. In Hazleton, for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. The driver of a Crestwood area school district bus sustained a medical emergency and was unresponsive as he was transporting 13 Holy Redeemer High School students. No injuries were reported thanks to four Redeemer students who stepped in when they noticed the driver having a stroke. Sophomores Caden Ayer, Lainey Conway, Max Bilchak, and junior Ryan Martinelli all worked together to control the situation while keeping their classmates safe. Ayer and Filchak were sitting next to each other when Filchak saw the driver's face in the mirror with his head tilted back. Martinelli noticed the driver was unresponsive and having a hard time breathing. He unbuckled his seatbelt and loosened his jacket and shirt. While all of this was taking place, Phil Chak, with Conway assisting, jumped out of the emergency door so other students could get off as they directed other motorists to move back with the bus still moving. No charges have been filed. The cause of the crash has been determined to be in a medical emergency, and the driver remains at a local medical facility. A new superintendent is expected to be appointed to the Crestwood Area School District. The school board called a special meeting today to appoint elementary school principal Vito Quaglia as the new superintendent. 
He's set to replace outgoing superintendent Robert Mahalik, who resigned in January to take on the position as Hazelton Area Assistant Superintendent. Quaglia worked for 18 years as a high school and elementary principal for the Wyoming Area School District before working as an elementary school principal in the Delaware Valley School District. Crestwood's Director of Curriculum, Peg Foster, is also scheduled to be appointed as Assistant Superintendent of the District. Quaglia's starting salary will be at $137,500, while Foster starting at $115,000 a year. Penalties could become stiffer for residents who violate Hazleton's Quality of Life Ordinance. Council members are proposing changes to the current ordinance that would result in increased fines and citations for those that violate the ordinance. President Jim Perry and Councilwoman Lauren Sacco want to update the ticketing ordinance that they say takes too long to get issues resolved. Most property maintenance issues consist of overgrown lawns, trash pileups, and unregistered vehicles. Sacco and Perry plan to propose new amendments that would expedite the ticketing process. If all goes as planned, a new ordinance will be in place this spring. A Luzerne County woman is facing charges for allegedly selling drugs in the Kingston area. Authorities executed a search warrant at the home of 36-year-old Leanne Mastrosimone on Monday. An investigation revealed that she was trafficking cocaine and marijuana since December from her home on Page Avenue. During a search, she admitted to police she kept a large amount of cocaine and cash in her bedroom. She was charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance and taken to the Luzerne County Prison without bail. Police believe they have the suspect involved in an armed robbery in Luzerne County. It happened Friday afternoon at the Pantry Quick on Wyoming Avenue in Kingston. The clerk told police the suspect showed a gun and demanded cash from the register. Kingston police say the suspect is a juvenile and charges are pending and the investigation is ongoing. The Luzerne County Council is underway to select their next top manager at tonight's meeting. The potential candidate will be the third non-interim manager in the county's decade-old home rule government. Robert Lawton served as the first manager from 2012 through the end of 2015, with David Pedry of Butler Township becoming the second manager in May of 2016. He resigned in May of 2021 to accept another position. The finalists for the third manager include Romilda Caracamo, David Johnston, and Randy Robertson. Caracamo has been serving as acting county manager since Pedri's resignation. That went into effect July 6th. Also, a blank space remains to insert the name and start date for one of the candidates that the council appoints. And there's also a blank line for the salary. That will be determined at the time of the manager's appointment. House Democrats have been working on multiple proposals to send direct payments to help Americans cover high gas prices. This will be similar to the $1,400 stimulus checks that were sent out to millions last year during COVID-19. A proposal made by Republicans Mike Thompson of California, John Larson of Connecticut, and Lauren Underwood of Illinois would send out an energy rebate of $100 per month for individuals, $200 to couples, plus $100 for each dependent. The money would be sent out each month. The national gas price goes over $4 a gallon. The rebate would be in effect through the end of 2022. The Department of Revenue extending its customer service hours for taxpayers to get help over the phone as the 2021 Pennsylvania Personal Income Tax Return Deadline is a month away. Personal Income Tax Assistance is now available from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday by calling 717-787-8201. Customers who call the number will be put through to the Department of Revenue's Customer Experience Center. Assistance with personal income tax is also available through the department's online Customer Service Center. 
The center provides answers to frequently asked questions about income tax and also lets taxpayers submit a question to the department just as they would by sending an email. The Department of Revenue's district offices are also open from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Taxpayers should call ahead to schedule an appointment and bring their Social Security card and photo ID with them to make the tax filing assistance easier. Coming up on WILN News, the snow is melted and winter's litter is showing up. It's time to clean up, but first, Let's take a look at our five-day forecast brought to you by the WYLN Weather Kids. We'll be right back. My name is Gio, and I'm three years old. The weather is going to be tomorrow rainy, so get your umbrella. Bye. We want your child to be our WYLN weather kid. Your child can be our feature weather reporter of the day on WYLN news and WYLN social media posts just by using your smartphone or any video recording device. It's easy. All ages are welcome, from toddlers to teens. To find out how, go to the weather section of WYLNTV.com or look for our post about it on the WYLN News Facebook page. Submit your Weather Kid video today. Membership opportunities are now available at the Valley Country Club, 79 Country Club Lane in Sugarloaf. Clubhouse upgrades are in progress and will be ready for the spring. Call Frank Radis for details at 570-233-5328. Two Italian Guys Pizzeria, 3 West Diamond Avenue in Hazleton has all your favorites from pizza, hoagies, salads, entrees, wings, and sides. Always made with the freshest ingredients. Call them at 570-459-2783. BLB Auto Sales, a division of Barbush Automotive. BLB has deals that can't be beat. They carry trucks, vans, SUVs, sedans, and sports cars, and all at the lowest prices. Barbush Automotive can handle all vehicle repairs since they do it all. Check out their specials, oil change and filter, just $19.95. Alignment, $49.95. Professional and good people. Call 570-454-7571. Pennsylvania Departments of Environmental Protection and Transportation took part in a community litter cleanup today. The cleanup went along with the Spring Pickup Pennsylvania campaign that encourages residents, local leaders, and businesses across the state to do the same in their communities. Each spring and fall, this event takes place that's coordinated by Keep Pennsylvania Beautiful. PennDOT and DEP hand out gloves, trash bags, and safety vests. During this time, DEP and the Pennsylvania Waste Association also sponsor no or low cost trash disposal for registered events at participating landfills throughout the month of April. Many Pennsylvanians throughout the state take part in the event such as scout troops, businesses, watershed organizations, Trout Unlimited, and road and gun clubs. They've been doing it for over 20 years. After a two-year break due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Junior Leadership is back for the 33rd year and is scheduled to begin August of 2020, 2022. Students in the Hazleton Area High Schools, Emanuel Christian School, Marion High School, MMI Preparatory School, and Weatherly Area High School, who will be juniors this fall, are eligible to apply. High school sophomores can pick up a Junior Leadership application at their guidance office. A copy of the application is also available on the Junior Leadership Hazelton Facebook page. Applications must be returned to the school's guidance office by March 31st. Governor Tom Wolf has recently announced Pennsylvania's fourth 143 day. It'll take place Monday, May 23rd, the fourth day of 2022. The day is in honor of Fred Rogers and it encourages Pennsylvanians to show their neighbors additional generosity and love. 
The tradition started in 2019 to spark a statewide movement to honor the beloved Pittsburgh native Fred Rogers, who always demonstrated compassion and kindness and has shown what it means to be a good neighbor. 143 has been used by Rogers as another way to say, I love you, through the numbers of each letter in the word. 143 Day is also being asked to serve as humanitarian relief to support those in Ukraine throughout nonprofit organizations such as the International Committee of the Red Cross, United Ways United for Ukraine AmeriCares, and the UN Refugee Agency. Coming up on Jim Thorpe's News Choice, March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month in Community and You. Plus, we're leading the way with Jane Daugherty, part two. Stay with us. When emergency strikes, trust your care to the all new ER at Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton with a facility that's now twice the size. Experienced nurses who see you right away. A quick assessment process makes sure you get the care you need. Advanced technology on site, safe private treatment rooms, and a peace of mind that only this level of care can bring. When it matters most, trust your partner in emergency care. Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton. You always get a feel-good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. Have you ever experienced that super pushy salesperson who follows you all around? Not here. Who wandered around that big box store looking for help in the appliance department only to find the pink guy? Not here. And we have an experienced courteous sales staff here to help you find the perfect mattress, piece of furniture, or appliance with no pressure. And don't forget, everyday low prices. You always get a feel good shopping experience at Grand Central in Hazleton. Do you like craft beer? Do you want to learn the right way to sample wine? How about checking out a restaurant with a unique flavor or a crazy food challenge? These are just some of the things we are featuring on Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. So, spend some time learning about great wine, great beer, and great food on WYLN TV 35. PPW Nation, get ready for the best of PPW Season 2. Join Paul Bow, E. Julius Kuyper, Alexander Bravado, Tom Mitchell, and Alex Watt as we take you down memory lane and relive some of the best PPW matches of all time. Saturdays at 5 p.m., Sundays at 10 p.m., only on WYLN. John's Family Restaurant in the Churchill Mall, Hazleton. Breakfast, lunch, dinner and desserts, homemade soups, sandwiches, entrees, and there's a kid's menu. Lunch and dinner specials daily. John's Family Restaurant in the Churchill Mall. Something is out there. What it is, no one knows. However, since its first sighting, there have been numerous reports of strange lights in the night sky. Some say they are extraterrestrials, flying saucers. But, to all of those seemingly unrelated uncertainties, there is one common thread. Soul Space Man on WYLAN TV 35. Thursdays at 1.30, series at 4, Sundays at 9. Welcome to Trooper Talk Tuesday, and with me is Trooper Anthony Petrosky from the Pennsylvania Police Station in Hazleton, Troop Inn. And we're going to talk about cold cases today because you have been involved in something absolutely amazing. Yeah, so recently investigators in Troop Inn were able to solve a 57-year-old cold case. Wow. It is a homicide of a 9-year-old girl, Marie San Chivarella right here out of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Very tough, difficult case, um, over 57 years. Everything was done the right way. See, what we get a lot now is, well, how come you weren't able to solve this back in the day? Things progress. Mm -hmm. Investigations are way different now. They're handled differently oh, than they were absolutely. 50 years ago. So during each era of troopers investigating this, everything was done absolutely the right way that it should for the time being. Mm -hmm. And we were able to finally put all the pieces together 
with the help of a wonderful young man, Mr. Eric Schubert, who is a genealogist at the age of 20, mind wow. you. He, he was able to join the team, help us, and we were able to solve one of the most horrible crimes that have ever been committed in Hazleton. And anybody who has ever had health care in that kind of a time frame also knows how much different things are. So of course things would be different in law enforcement. And having this young man get involved, is that something unusual? Because yeah. you have someone who is a non, nothing to do with law enforcement. Correct. And he, he approached you. He did, and this is extremely unusual, especially for the Pennsylvania State Police. We tend to not use a lot of outside agencies and we need a lot of, we need a lot of checks and balances before we use them. So in, in 2019, we had a press conference. We had teamed up with uh, Parabon Industries and they created some phenotype sketches of what, based off the DNA profile, what they thought that the killer might look like. We released those, we got a lot of good tips on it, but nothing really panned out. Um, Mr. Eric Schubert, who was a college student in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, he had sent me an email February 25th, 2020, basically introducing himself, telling me who he was, and basically saying, I'd really like to work on this case. Does he have ties to Hazleton? He does not. Oh. So he's from New Jersey. Oh, wow. He goes to Elizabethtown College, but he's a genealogist. Now at the time he emailed me, he was 18 years old. He started doing genealogical work at the age of 10. Um, he, I, I know, it's the same reaction we get from everybody. He wow. just, he started off enjoying it and it just, it became an obsession for him. So he said he would offer his services for free. He knows he could really help out with this case and he just happened to see it from our press conference. Um, so, you know, thankfully I didn't delete the email <laughs> and, uh, you know, I approached some of my, my bosses about this and I said, I got this email, I want you to take a look at it. And they did, um, so myself and the lead investigator, Corporal Mark Barron, we actually went down to Elizabethtown to meet him and we had a really good conversation with him. We got a good, good feel of him and, uh, you know, we came back, we told the lieutenant, the lieutenant immediately started uh, going through the chain of command as far as getting approval for him to join the team and work on this investigation. We got the green light on that and uh, you know the rest was history. Thank if we didn't have him on our team, we wouldn't be here today. That is amazing. Absolutely it is. So it's very unusual for us to be able to do that. But I hope this sets the tone that hey, there's a lot of people out there that can really help us and help solve some of these cold cases. And when it comes to something such as this, once it was all said and done and you were getting ready to make the announcement because you, you said that something was coming. Yes. And it was a few days later that actually, how, what, what kind of feeling went through that, that crowd of people that you dealt with for all yeah, this time? It, it, was, uh, it was intense, you know, especially being in that room during the press conference with family members of Maurice, friends and members of the community who lives have changed because of this incident back in 1964. So, you know, it was really, uh, it, it was intense. You know, just like every other investigator, anybody who's part of this, we're all proud to be part of this. And this goes all the way back to the initial troopers who worked, when this happened, five months straight without a day off, working 20 hour days to try to solve this case. So, you know, everybody that was part of this, no matter what your part was, we're very proud. And it sends a very stern message to people out there that we don't give up. We're not going to give up, and we will only progress in our investigations and use technology to our advantage to be able to solve some of these cold cases. And also, just to mention the fact that in the other side of Luzerne County, the same thing kind of happened there with uh, Baby Doe, and now they were able to raise enough crowdsourcing funds that, who knows, that one may also be solved. We only hope they can have success with that, and we want to be able to solve as many cold cases as we, as we can within the Pennsylvania State Police because again, it shows that we're not gonna, we're not gonna forget. Just because you were a victim or your, your family members were victims years ago doesn't mean you mean any less now. So we wanna be able to solve these and use whatever tools, technology that we can. That's amazing. And we're gonna talk some more about that in future discussions here on Trooper Talk Tuesday. Once again, Pennsylvania State Police Trooper Anthony Petrosky, Troop in Hazleton, Always a pleasure and so much exciting news coming out right here on WYLN. Penn State Hazleton is improving the lives of others starting in our community. Providing degrees that meet the needs of the area. Fueling entrepreneurship and contributing more than $36 million annually to the state's economy. 
researching the health of our local ecosystem on the Susquehanna River. Together, our impact keeps growing, backed by the strength of 24 campuses and 700,000 alumni. Want to learn to ski? The Pocono Mountains is the place to be. With lessons for every age. You'll be skiing or snowboarding in no time. Right. Now you're doing it by yourself. And learning is fun. And the views are beautiful. Choose from six amazing ski areas. Learn more at PoconoSki.com. Hi everybody, this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic, Dr. John's going to be solo talking about how we do CDL exams, truck exams in the office. So if you need a CDL exam, tune in. that WYLN News provides news updates every weekday afternoon at 1, 3, and 5 here on TV and on social media? Did you also know you can watch WYLN News on the go by visiting our website or YouTube page? Now more than ever, WYLN is your local news leader. scenes to learn more about the lives and goals of our local leaders. So, Jane Doherty is leading the way again into part two of this week's series. And welcome back to this week's Leading the Way with Jane Doherty. Jane, tell us uh, how you knew that you would end up where you are today and what led you to pursue that interest? Uh, I always had an interest in volunteering and helping my community. I also held a public service job for my career as a public librarian. So uh, public service was always important to me. And I knew many, many years ago when I was first involved with a group called Leadership Hazelton, which I am now the board chair actually, uh, we learned about different organizations in our community that needed help and the American Cancer Society Telethon was one of them. So I volunteered to help at the, t at the telethon and I, I always say I won't tell you how many years I'm with the ACS but it's more than 30 years and uh, I learned right there how important the telethon was to educating people about cancer awareness and to fundraising so that we can provide research and patient services. Check back tomorrow night as Jane continues leading the way into part three of this week's segment. Good night. And that's the news. Remember, the source matters now more than ever. Catch all the latest on our Facebook page, YouTube page, or at WYLNTV.com. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next right here on WYLN-TV.